Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to describe uh, the phaser diagram for an LRC circuit. So, what we're looking at right here is we have an LRC circuit, a resistor R, capacitor with a capacitance C, and uh, an inductor with an inductance L, hooked to an AC uh, voltage source. In this case, we're going to be looking at a sinusoidally varying voltage source. Again, there are other, there are other AC voltage waveforms, but the sine wave is by far the most common. All right. So this input voltage here uh, can be written as some Vmax sine omega t. And I like to put a little symbol like this here. What this means is that the current, half the time it's going to be the right, half the time it's going to be the left. You know, so what we're looking at is an AC current. Now, before we talk about the LRC circuit, it's very important to understand what the phasor diagrams look like for the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor themselves. So I've made videos on those. If you haven't seen those, I would stop this right now. Go back and watch the uh, videos for uh, what it looks like when you hook an AC, a sinusoidally varying AC source to a resistor and a capacitor and an inductor. But I'm going to kind of overview those right now. All right, so this small picture right here. This is the phasor diagram for an AC voltage source hooked to a resistor. The current is in phase with the voltage. For the rest of this video, I'm going to make the current phasors in red, the voltage phasors in blue. This would be the angle omega t. And the voltage uh, across the resistor is equal to IR. Now, an important thing to note is that the voltage phasor is in phase with the current phasor right, for a purely resistive, resistive circuit. A little comment about the length of these vectors. I drew the current vector longer than the blue just to distinguish them, but it doesn't even make sense to compare their magnitudes because the current would have magnitudes, uh, or uh, the current has units of amps and the voltage phasor has units of volts. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to say four amps is more than three volts. So even comparing their magnitudes really is meaningless. Quick little review about the phasor diagram. So the instantaneous projection onto this axis gives the instantaneous voltage. So when, they, when these phasors are here, the voltage is a maximum. When both of these phasors are here, the voltage and current is zero. And when these phasors are all the way down here, the voltage and current are maximums again, but in the opposite direction and so forth. Okay, uh, the capacitor. Now, if you go back and watch that video, uh, an interesting thing about the capacitor is that the current phasor lags, or I'm sorry, uh, leads the voltage phasor for the capacitor. And again, I invite you to go look at that video as to why that is. It, it, it uh, is ahead by pi over two. And for the inductor, the current uh, lags the voltage for the inductor. Now, also in that video, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the terms reactance. So a capacitor has a quantity called reactance. That's what this thing is, this X sub C here where the x of c is equal to 1 over omega c, omega being the angular frequency and radian per second, the c being the capacitance. And if you work out the units, that comes to ohms. I like to think of this as kind of like the resistance for the capacitor when hooked to an AC circuit. For the inductor, the current lags the voltage by pi over 2, and the uh, inductor also has a reactance. That's, the, that's what this is, this x sub l. And when calculating the reactance for inductor, it's equal to omega L, where the omega, again, is the angular frequency of the source in radian per second, and the L is the inductance. Okay, So it's important to understand for each of these that, you know, for the resistor, the current and voltage are in phase. For the capacitor, the current leads the voltage, and the reactance of the capacitor, 1 over omega C. And for the inductor, the voltage leads the current or you could say the current lags the voltage, either one, by pi over two. And for the inductor, the reactance, x sub l, is equal to omega l. So these things are like the resistance terms. So you'll notice there's three different, you know, quote, resistance terms, unquote. you got the resistor R for the resistor, this term, which effectively gives a resistance for the capacitor, this term, which effectively gives a resistance for the inductor. All right, so now what I'm going to do over on the right, over here, is I'm going to try to draw the phasor diagram now uh, for the LRC circuit. Now I've already drawn in the current phasor. On top of that now I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, the voltage. Remember for a resistor the voltage and the current are in phase. So when I put the phasor diagram here that might look something like this. All right, so that represents the voltage of the resistor. Now 
the capacitor. When I look right here, you'll notice that the current leads the voltage, or another way to say that, the voltage lags the current. So when I draw the phasor diagram over on the right for the capacitor, the voltage is going to be kind of down and right uh, at an angle of pi over 2. All right. So there's my phasor uh, diagram, or my phasor that represents the voltage of the capacitor. And again, and I'm getting that from right here, the voltage is lagging behind the current. All right, now we're going to take a look at the inductor, and you'll notice that the voltage of the inductor leads the current by pi over 2. So in my picture over on the right, that's going to point like this. There is my, oops, let me draw that a little better. There's my voltage phasor for the inductor. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice that I drew the voltage for the inductor um, longer than for the capacitor. The only real reason I did that is that there's no reason to think they're equal. You, you know, I mean, they can be. They could possibly be equal, but, you know, we've not put any numbers anywhere. So, in general, they will not be equal. Which one's bigger is going to depend on the frequencies, right, and the values for the inductor and the capacitor. In this example, I just assumed one of them was larger, and that's going to be this one, right? But there'll be plenty of examples where maybe this will be the larger one. So there's the phasor diagram for the circuit. So now, you know, what you have to do is imagine uh, we have the angle omega t here. Right? And imagine this entire thing rotating now counterclockwise. Now, the cool thing about these phasors is they are vectors, right? So when I look at this, you'll notice that <clears throat> these vectors are in exact opposite directions. So what that means is I can replace these two with a single vector equal to the difference between their lengths. So I'm going to go ahead, and I think what I'll do is copy this and do a new picture here. All right, I'm going to move this up, give myself a little room here. And I'm going to copy that. Move it down here. Now i got a slightly different picture, and that's okay. Oops, looks like I'm going to need a little more room here. This one now. Oops. Let's try that again. Well, dog on it. Let's just scale that down just a little bit. Move that over here. Okay. So now I've got my two phasor diagrams. At this point, they're identical. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace these two with a single phasor that's the vector sum of the two. Now when we add vectors, and I'm going to add them calling up and left positive, so that's going to be this voltage minus this voltage. So, oops. Let's see. Got to find the tool I'm looking for. Oh, there we go. I'm going to replace this pair of vectors. with a single vector, and it's going to equal uh, the, the V sub L minus V sub C, right? And again, assuming this one was longer. Had I assumed this one was longer, I'd have this pointing down and right, and I would have probably have V sub C minus V sub L, so it doesn't, doesn't matter for the picture. Now, something to notice here, the blue vectors now. We're going to add these together. Remember how vectors add. Graphically, when you add vectors, they always, they always add tip to tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vector and move it here. And now I'm going to draw in the vector sum of the two. Always adding vectors tip to tail. So there is the vector sum right there. And that is equal to the input voltage. So, <clears throat> oops, let me get rid of a couple more things here. Let me take this. I'm going to move that 
right here. So remember, this one's equal to v sub l minus v sub c. All right. Now, you'll notice a couple of things. One, I've got an angle, some sort of angle here. I'm going to give that a name. I'm going to call that angle v. And that's going to be the angle now between my input, between the input voltage and the current phasor. And by Pythagorean theorem, the input voltage there, or that voltage, is going to equal the square root of V sub R squared plus V sub L minus V sub C squared. Now, V sub R is equal to this. So I'm going to go ahead and put IR, and that's being squared, plus, now V sub L minus V sub C, looking over here, the, this is what V sub L is equal to. This is the voltage across the inductor. So this is going to equal I X sub L squared. Whoops. I'm sorry. I don't want to square that yet. Got to do the subtraction first. Minus V sub C, which is going to equal I X sub C. And that quantity is being squared. Okay. So you'll notice that a current can be factored out of this. So the input voltage is equal to the current times the square root of R squared plus this quantity X sub L minus X sub C squared. Now you notice when you compare this to Ohm's law, V equals IR. This quantity, this whole thing, is in the spot of the resistor. That quantity has a special name. It's called impedance. Right? And impedance, I like to just define it like this. It's basically the, re the net resistance of the circuit uh, when you take into account the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor. And the impedance, it's usually represented with the letter Z, I guess I'll write that right here, is equal to the square root of R squared plus X sub L minus X sub C squared. This will work out to ohms. And let's talk about this angle now, this angle phi. This angle is kind of an important angle. It's, it's important for power, uh, for the power calculations. I'll talk about that in just a minute. First of all, let's talk about how to calculate it. Well, you'll notice, you know, we can basically use any trig function we want, but I'm going to go ahead and use the tangent function. The tangent of the angle phi is equal to the side opposite divided by the side adjacent. So that's going to equal this, V sub L minus V sub C over V sub R. So V sub L minus V sub C over V sub R. However, each of these can be written using Ohm's law, IR, IX sub C, IX sub L. So the tangent of the angle phi here can be written, let's see, V sub C, that's going to be this. And I'm going to go ahead and just divide the I out right now. So we're going to have X sub C minus, whoops, I'm sorry, that was V sub L. So that's going to be X sub L. minus X sub C over R. And again, I'm getting that just by replacing this with I X sub L, this with I X sub C, this with I R. And this is how we would calculate what's called the phase, or uh, yeah, that's called the phase angle, the angle between the input voltage and the current in the circuit. Now, let's talk about why that thing's so important. So when the power is transmitted, it's a lot like a mechanical uh, circuit or a mechanical system in that, you know, if I apply a, if I have an object that's kind of moving back and forth, you know, imagine this thing just kind of doing this. If it's here moving this way and I apply a force in that direction, I, tra I very effectively transmit energy to it. However, if this thing's um, moving this way and I apply a force maybe in this direction, I'll be dropping energy from the system. The energy transfer to the system is most is most effective when the force is in phase with the velocity, when the force is in the same direction as the velocity. And electrical circuits kind of work the same way. The electrical uh, power transmission is more efficient when the voltage is in phase with the current. So when the voltage is completely uh, in line with the current, you have the most effective power uh, transmission. That's called resonance. So when you're calculating power in an AC circuit, this is how it's calculated. It's current times the voltage times the cosine of the angle between the voltage and the current phasor. So that's going to be times cosine phi. All right, so let me kind of uh, see if I can 
summarize this. So in analyzing an LRC circuit or, or an RC circuit or an RL circuit, you do so by drawing the phasor diagram for it. You have to realize that for the resistor, the current and voltage are in phase. For the capacitor, the current leads the voltage. For the inductor, the current lags the voltage. You draw the phasor diagram for the circuit you're working with. The voltage phasors are added together to give uh, this expression. And this, this basically is Ohm's law for an AC circuit. This quantity right here is gives the impedance of the circuit, which is the total resistance of the circuit. These have to be calculated. The X of L and the X of C, these are functions of uh, the frequency. So those are typically, those are calculated values and you get the phase angle by the inverse tangent of uh, this side over this side. So that's gonna be the inverse tangent of the X of L minus X of C uh, over R. Now, when the voltage leads the current around, or another way to say that, when the current lags the voltage, the circuit is said to be an inductive type of circuit because the inductive load is uh, higher than the capacitive load. If the capacitive load was higher, meaning that if the X sub C was higher than the X sub L, the voltage phasor would be down here somewhere and we would say that the circuit is more capacitive. So that's pretty well it for phasor diagrams in an LRC circuit. I think I'll go ahead and stop this now and just work on some examples. Everybody have a great day.